Let's start somewhere pleasant and then go to increasingly dark places as this interview continues. <laughs> Why do women make friends, right? Like how were female-female bonds helpful for our female ancestors? It's a great question. It's actually a more complicated question than you might think because at least with men's same-sex bonds, there's a clear evolutionary advantage insofar as men were competing in groups, you know, throughout human history in the context of warfare, um, or they also were uh, engaged in more coalitional activity like hunting. And so for women, it becomes more complicated as to why they might form same-sex alliances. Now, some have made the argument, um, such as Sarah Blafferherty, that female allies basically enhanced women's fertility. So being able to recruit other women as allo mothers might have helped women, you know, just enhance their reproductive success by being able to pursue other fitness relevant goals. The argument here being that other women were sources of support, child care. Mm -hmm. I take an approach that other women might have been useful as coalitional defense partners. So there are data supporting that women tend to use more um, indirect aggression or relational aggression, where they tend to disrupt victims' social standing or access to resources. And other data support that this type of intrasexual competition has a coalitional component to it, such that if women know that a same-sex peer has a friend present, they are less likely to spread negative gossip about her. So having female allies might have actually served as reputational defense. And so you might have been able to protect your social reputations and access to resources by having these allies. But they might also help you disseminate your reputational attacks. So Hess and Hagen have done cool work showing that when gossip is repeated by multiple independent sources, people are more likely to believe those statements. So if you have female allies who can reiterate your gossip, you might be more effective in leveraging these reputational attacks against your same-sex rivals. Women are using or can use their female allies as both reputational defense and as reputational offense as in their leveraging of these attacks. Now, in terms of the allo care, there are some data to support that women in non-industrialized societies, so hunter-gatherer women, are aided by the presence of same-sex allo mothers. However, when I looked into these data, the interesting pattern was that their allo mothers or the women who are supporting them in their child rearing tended to most often be genetic kin, which can mm. more easily be explained by kin selection rather than as like pure female allyship. And so it it, it was interesting because you hear this claim a lot that other women are, are allo mothers, but I actually had a hard time finding data that supported that it was non-kin who were helping women with their children. Um, nonetheless, there are data that women who are well-liked, their children tend to be more likely to survive and be healthier. And so that suggests that at, at minimum, possibly that having other women like you might protect you and your offspring, even if they're not actually caring for your offspring. Maybe they are, you know, less likely to inflict harm on them or less likely to be neg uh, negligent towards them. Wow. Okay. So I was hoping we would start somewhere pleasant, um, but we're going straight to uh, going straight <laughs> to the toxic side. Yeah. Um, but that's fine with me. So I guess I'll just kind of paint that picture back for you and you tell me if I'm confused. You're saying that there are two main explanations for the benefits of female-female bonds. One of them, and this is the more historical one, the one the one that goes deeper kind of in the anthropological literature, is this idea of alloparenting, where women will help other women raise their young, babysitting, that kind of thing. And this increases a woman's fitness in obvious ways. And so that inspires friendship. And then your view of it, which is newer and comes as a reaction to you not finding as much data on alloparenting as you would expect, given the prevalence of this theory, which I've heard before, 
your view is that female-female bonds act as a defense system against gossip and also a social network to make your gossip more powerful when you launch attacks on your rivals. Am, am I painting a fair picture here? Yeah, it's it's similar to the Machiavellian interpretation of intelligence, that one contributing factor to why we might evolve certain capacities is that they can allow us to be more effective competitors, essentially. 